there's so much stigma around not being able to talk about um, mental illness and um, it, I mean it's it and it's just ridiculous the the fact that we feel like we a lot of us feel like we can't talk to people um, there's just so many resources and friends and people that have gone through like not not alone you know we're not alone that's the that's the biggest thing I think is to reach out and it's hard it's hard to reach out but uh, you know and kind of look out for your friends too you know if it feels like they're they're not doing well and you gotta gotta reach out what's up everyone and welcome to this week's episode of trevor talks i'm your host trevor tyson and i'm so stoked that you're here with us today i am beyond excited for this episode number one because we have yet again another rock legend on the show and that doesn't necessarily happen all the time especially at this caliber because i've been listening to this guy for over 10 years so you have to stick around for this whole episode whether you're in a rock or not I don't care. Listen, this is going to be insightful. This guy is a legend and you're going to be so grateful you stayed for it. But before I introduce him, I want to give a special thank you to our friends at Life Audio for making this episode happen as possible. So thank you so much to Life Audio. We appreciate you and uh, thanks for supporting the show. Our guest today is a powerhouse vocalist, songwriter, the original frontman of Three Days Grace, and most notably the frontman of rock supergroup St. Asonia. They have a new LP hitting stores on December 9th called Introvert Extrovert, and I'm so excited to hear about it. Please help me welcome Mr. Adam Gantier. Adam, thank you for being here. Hey, thanks for having me. Nice to be here again. Dude, yeah, again, if uh, people aren't quite sure what we're talking about again, no, we haven't done an interview, but Adam was actually a part of our Choose to Live event on September 10th for World Suicide Prevention Day. And man, thank you for doing that. I haven't got to officially thank you for being a part of that event. That was a monumental event for, I believe, a lot of people. And like, just to selfishly say for myself, um, I remember being... I guess somewhere around the neighborhood of 10 to 12 when Never Too Late came out. And uh, I knew we were going to do an event in some way, shape or form with that song. So thank you for being a part of that and making this little Georgia boys dream come true. Oh, of course, man. No, it was my pleasure. Absolutely. To be a part of something like that was was really cool. And yeah, Never Too Late felt like the <clears throat> a song to you know to play <laughs> dude of course and the fact that you opened it up with a saint asonia song fit the bill so well and i want to talk about extrovert in particular so just for people that may not know like the music industry is kind of weird right now so the best way to launch music is via singles eps and then maybe do another ep and collab it into a lp which is a long form album which is what you guys are doing with introvert and extrovert so mm -hmm. can you break down for us like the collaborative effort between these two EPs and kind of the concept behind this? Yeah. I mean, we, we were during the, when the pandemic first started, we got, obviously we were, you know, stuck in lockdown like everybody else. And, but we were wanting to, we were still wanting to make a record and I was writing music at home sort of just by myself in my studio. And, um, and those are the basically those are the songs that ended up being on introvert and you know we aptly named both eps uh you know that first one being introvert because they were you know they were just written all of us at home and our ideas being remotely sent back and forth which was different for us because we always tend to write for the most part together you know so um yeah and uh we wrote a a batch of like 12 songs or something like that and uh narrowed it down to a few and put them on introvert and um yeah when it started to open back up we were able to uh like leave home and sort of get back to semi normal life um i came down to nashville and uh, actually got a, a place down here with my family and started co-writing with other people um uh, just there's so many writers down here and it's it's kind of the way of life down here is just writing music which is a lot of fun so extrovert ended up coming coming from those sessions uh so yeah i mean they're written completely opposite sort of uh situations from one another and uh there's definitely a difference in the music um i think from introvert to extrovert it was it's definitely cool uh co-writing with guys that i hadn't co-written with before the guys from wage war did some writing with them and um the memphis mayfire guys and just you know, 
I don't know, there are a bunch of great rock artists down here in Nashville. So it's cool to do some co-writing. And that's sort of what ended up on intro, or Extrovert. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cody Quinstad's one of the best songwriters of our generation. So to kind of collab him with you and mm -hmm. really see this thing come to fruition, there's so much good music coming out. And especially from yourself, Wage War, Memphis Mayfire, it's just a perfect collaboration for this in my opinion from having listening having been listening to this ep all day long today i do have a favorite song on it which it's weird thinking back when maddie mullins was on the show from memphis a lot of times my favorite song on their records are the last song and it's the same thing mm -hmm. for this which is chasing the light so i really want oh, to really? talk about chasing the light that is such an encouraging song it you're ending this on a positive note, which mm -hmm. is so important for people. Like we are back into like almost the pre COVID type thing, but there's still a lot of restrictions around the world. Mm -hmm. um, but you guys are starting to tour again, which is going to be phenomenal going out on the road with our friends in skillet and theory mm -hmm. of the dead man in 2023. So you have all of this stuff coming up. Mm -hmm. You have the EP coming out, the mm -hmm. LP, which is both of them put together with bonus tracks in December what is chasing the light about and why was this the perfect song to end this ep with well i think yeah it, it I, the last couple of years being you know with the with the world going through what we did i think uh it was very it was a negative for the most part for people it was just a a couple of years of a lot of negativity not being able to you know do it you love to do and just all sorts of stuff. So chasing light. Yeah. It, it's sort of a, um, it's, it was written just with a little bit of hope there, you know, that, that, uh, things are changing, you know, and it seemed to be the, seemed to be the right song to end, um, extrovert with just because the, you know, the first bit of that EP is, um, kind of, uh, talking about the state that we're in and then getting out of it towards the end and then ending with chasing the light. And it's just basically sort of questioning, like, are we wasting our time trying to find positivity in this world? And I don't think, obviously I don't think we are, but, uh, you know, I think everybody wonders that am I on the right path? Am I doing the right thing? And, um, yeah. And that's what, that's what it's about. Yeah. And so many people are wondering those things. I mean, even myself, I've caught myself wondering those exact words like, am I wasting my time with this? Like, mm -hmm. is it worth chasing hope? And the answer is always yes. And I'm stoked that you're able to put that message out. It's a reoccurring theme for you, though, as being someone who's gone through addiction, who's gone through recovery, who's reached stardom within the music industry, and then like, making a decision for yourself to step away from that and now coming back into it, you've been through quite a bit, not even just in your career, but in your life. And mm -hmm. quite rarely do I ever start off with talking about a project in particular, but I was excited about this one. Still want to keep talking about it. Mm -hmm. But Adam, you've gone through a lot in your life um, and you've been very vulnerable and generous to share it with so many people and provide a sense of hope and encouragement to millions of people across the globe so man i want to go back to the beginning like before the music came into play for everything for you in particular adam from childhood where did all this start for you yeah i guess uh i mean it from a pretty young age i was introduced to um to performing live uh and playing uh singing and all that stuff so basically as far back as I can remember, it's always sort of been about music and performing and stuff for me. Um, when I was pretty young, I used to, uh, my mom used to take me to jam nights where I'd get up with a house band and sing cover songs, you know? Um, so that's kind of how it started for me. And, uh, I just, uh, you know, when I was that young, I, I think I realized that that's what I wanted to do. I just really, really enjoyed it. So, and my my mom is very musical and my mom's side of the family is and all that stuff so music's always just been a part of my life and from a pretty early age i decided that i wanted to do music no matter what at what level didn't really matter i just wanted to play music for for a living and um yeah so it's really hard for me to think about anything before that because it, it music was just always there uh so yeah just always been around it 
and uh, thanks to my mom sort of introducing me to how to perform live ish, you know, around people mm-hmm. and in front of people or whatever. And yeah, pretty wild. That is insane. And going into some of the times in your life where you may have not had that hope that you have now, how were you able to make it through those seasons to get to this point where you're able to share that with so many people? Yeah, I think, uh, I think I, I've been through for sure. I, I've struggled with, uh, with addiction and stuff and not even really realizing it, but from about the time that I was, you know, 14 years old until, you know, like, uh, I don't know, 10, 12 years ago when I started to realize that it was a, it was a problem, uh, even, even before that. But, um, yeah, so it, it's been, I, I've definitely had no shortage of things to write about and I've had no shortage of education on, um, you know, just life lessons and that sort of thing. And, uh, for me, when I was, when I was young, like first little bit of high school, 14, 15 years old, um, I was just, I was using music as an outlet. I was just writing, you know, I was super influenced by like Nirvana and Pearl Jam and the Seattle bands and stuff. So, and that was pretty emotional stuff at the time. So I was very influenced by that. And I just started writing my own songs and getting stuff out that way. And it kind of, it just, you know, it just snowballed into the same sort of progression with Three Days Grace and then, yeah, and now. You know, it's kind of what I've always known is to just write and get stuff out. Uh, yeah. It seems to work for me. Yeah. That's incredible. And before we started today, I was thinking like, where was the first time I ever heard like Three Days Grace or any of these rock bands that I really got influenced from? And I got to thinking, I was like, you know what? We can thank WWE SmackDown versus Raw for putting oh, yeah. Three Days Grace, right. Breaking Benjamin, and mm-hmm. uh Power Man 5000, like all these bands, like really good music back when they put quality music on uh, video games like that. That's right. And that's where I was first introduced to your voice and Three Days Grace. I believe they put Riot and Animal on mm-hmm. one of the games. And of course, being in high school, I was like, just want to hit people with chairs on the games and stuff. But the one <laughs> thing I took out of that that's carried over into the rest of my life is the music from it. Because if it weren't for that, I wouldn't have uh, discovered bands like Skillet that really challenged me to like okay if you want to be a part of this music thing like uh, you don't have any musical talents but if you want to be within this industry and help people launch and create and etc like chase after it so with all that being said how does it feel to be on the flip side whereas you told us who you were inspired by now to hear a 25 year old say like you know what i was really influenced by three days grace back in the day and now saying Sonia, that has to be a weird feeling especially being as a career musician, like you never necessarily think that things are going to add up and you're just going to be able to like sing the national anthem at Gillette Stadium and all these crazy things that you've been able to do. Now to sit back and be a legacy artist and hear people say like, yeah, I was really influenced by your music and without it, mm-hmm. I may not be doing what I'm doing today. How does that feel? Yeah, it's it's super surreal, man, to hear stuff like that because um, I, I never, never over it never thought about it too much and never really realized it, but you made a good point. Like it all happens really quick. And then there's time, you know, it gets to a point where there's time and you can sit back and, and uh, kind of look, look at what has happened, that sort of thing and take it all in. And it's, it's still really hard to believe because I, I it's hard for me to actually wrap my head around it. Cause I mean, I just, i just always wanted to play music. So yeah. the fact that I'm doing it, uh, you know, and people are influenced by it or it's helped people in certain situations and all sorts. Of, I mean, it's just, yeah, it's surreal to hear that stuff. It still is. And it's still, it's still, I don't even think it really registers even still to this day with me, like that it has had an impact the way it has on certain people, you know, um, I'm sure there's going to be, there'll be a day where it's like, it, it'll hit me like a brick wall be like, you know, but still, I'm still just taking it in. I'm trying not to think too much about, yeah. you know, the past or the future or anything. Just try to trying to stay present. So, oh. yeah, it's pretty crazy, though. It really is. I mean, you've got Shaquille O'Neal making videos and convertibles right. singing Never Too Late. <laughs> and then you've got weirdos like me that go and get it inked on your wrist. It's like, you know what? This song was a generation changer. And one thing my co-host and um, 
business partner Mary Nickel brought up on Choose to Live is when Never Too Late came out into the radio scene, they actually bleeped out some of it because it was too controversial for the time. Were you aware of that? And uh, how did that make you feel? Like you trailblazed the whole mental health movement in rock. I'll go ahead and say that. Hmm. Were you aware that they did that? No, I wasn't aware of uh, in Never Too Late. No, I didn't know that. Maybe at certain stations or in yeah. certain states or something like that. Um, no, I knew they they had uh, blanked out certain words in I Hate Everything About You. Uh, <laughs> like every I hit mean, we take and yeah. stuff like that, that. Yeah, but no, I didn't I didn't realize that anything was um, blanked out Never Too Late. It's interesting, you know, how things change, you know. yeah. And you were making a statement with it. It's like so many people out there are struggling with not only addiction, but the recovery process of it all. And then wondering if their life is worth living. Mm -hmm. So many people have gone through those moments, even to this day. Maybe somebody's listening to this right now and they're like, you know what? I'm just ready to end it all. But for some reason, I found this random dude's podcast with Adam and I want to listen to it. And if mm -hmm. that is the case, what would your message be to them today? that it, there we have to talk about there there's so much stigma around not being able to talk about um mental illness and um it, i mean it's it and it's just ridiculous that the fact that we feel like we a lot of us feel like we can't talk to people um there's just so many resources and friends and people that have gone through like not not alone you know we're not alone that's the that's the biggest thing i think is to reach out and it's hard it's hard to reach out but uh you know and kind of look out for your friends too you know if it feels like they're they're not doing well and you gotta gotta reach out yeah. it's pretty important yeah we have to reach out we have to have conversations we have to realize like the things that we're going through in this moment no matter how big or small they might seem like at the moment mm -hmm. it's not worth taking your life over mm -hmm. and it's easier said than done for someone mm -hmm. that's struggling with depression just to say that but there's so many resources available and one of them that we have available on this uh episode in particular on youtube is um we're partnered with heart support on this to where if you comment in the comments below it's going to go directly to the heart support wall which is an anonymous chat form and um, they'll get back to you natively on the youtube comments on this so if you're struggling today and need someone to talk to heart support is here for you um, and they want to talk to you in the youtube comments below but adam this has been such a refreshing take on what seems like I mean, for me being a little bit younger, like a lifelong career that you've had and it's only getting bigger. I'm excited to see you out with Skillet in 2023. I'm excited for people to get their hands on the EP Extrovert and then later on on December 9th get both EPs with some bonus tracks as one called Introvert Extrovert. But before we let you go, I do have one simple question for you. And if there's someone out there that wants to be a musician and maybe they've been in a band and they've had to walk away from that, they think they've hit the height of their career and they're never going to hit it again. What would your advice be to them? And why would you challenge that mindset? Well, I mean, if you're, if we're, if you're playing music for the right reasons and you, you actually love it and you just want to play music, there's, I don't think there's, there's any real reason to give up on music at any point if it's if you love it um you know it's, for some people it's just a part of them to play music and you know there's no real other choice and depending on how you feel you know how you measure success i guess is yeah, everybody's own own uh prerogative so uh, it, it's a weird one but if there's anybody out there that's wanting to just get started and get going in the right direction that we have so many tools nowadays with with social media and stuff that we, we didn't have um, when we were starting out at all. So I feel like to reach people, it might be a little bit easier, but um, your music's got to be really good. So really focus on the craft and, you know, and just, uh, just do what you love to do. And if you love it, I'm sure other people will. 
Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a rock legend. Adam, it's been great having you on the show yet again. I'm sure we'll do it again soon and have fun out there on the road. I'm excited to celebrate the success with you guys. And uh, if you're listening to this, guys, like, and you were struggling, you need some help, maybe you don't feel comfortable going in the YouTube comments, we've got so many resources available for you. We have the links in the description below for heart support, death to life, beneath the skin, the crisis text line. There's so many resources available for you. Remember that it's never too late. There's always a reason to choose to live. We'll talk to you guys next week.